All right, we might kick things off. Um, can I just start by wishing everyone a warm welcome to session um, number three on our um, education week, which is going to be a, a massive week for Hockey New South Wales. It's um, a new initiative and it is all about the volunteer. So we've thought long and hard about the people we've got involved, all our presenters, which are um, both Hockey New South Wales staff, as well as people recognised as um, industry experts outside of Hockey New South Wales on a variety of topics. Um, and already today we've had a lunchtime session, an evening session, and tomorrow, I think it's tomorrow, Rachel, it might be the day after we have a morning session. So we're running these across all different times, again, recognising that um, the hockey volunteer workforce um, has all sorts of jobs and um, responsibilities outside of hockey that we need to juggle. So um, it's new, but um, we're really hoping that um, each session um, the volunteers can get something out of. So this so far is our biggest session. Um, we've got quite a few people um, on board. Um, by way of introduction, um, my name's Craig Bede. Um, and I work closely um, with Rachel Tremaine, who's on the conference call with us as well tonight. Um, and we provide a lot of education and training around revolutionise to our clubs and associations. Prior to COVID, um, we often jumped in a car and we've actually got to know each other pretty well because we'd spend some long road trips, jumping around the state, working with associations and clubs, teaching them what revolutionise can do um, and essentially um, helping them through because sometimes it is a bit daunting that first step um, but we're absolutely committed to revolutionise sport we think it's um, one of the best systems out there um, Rachel and I have worked in a number of other sports and this is by far the best one I've worked with um, and again I mentioned this on a previous um, session we ran our job is all about trying to help the volunteer burden and we think Revolutionise absolutely does that. We're actually in our fifth year now with Revolutionise Sport um, and quite interesting that the positive feedback from all the Hockey New South Wales clubs and associations was part of the reason why the rest of Australia has now jumped on board. So we've got Hockey Australia and every other state and territory now on um, Revolutionise. Um, which is a great result um, for hockey and we can start to work with Rev Sport too on how we can make the system even better for some of those um, intricacies which are um, just um, relevant to hockey. Um, as I mentioned, Rachel and I have done a lot of travelling and sat down with a lot of volunteers to help them with Revolutionise. Training can be a little bit tricky because we're dealing with people that have different levels of computer skills, different understandings of what um, Revolutionise can do. So over that last couple of years, we've really adopted a particular type of education and training session where we run through exactly what the system can do. A lot of the time we find volunteers don't know exactly what the system can do. We'll give you some little um, insight into what we've seen other associations and clubs use Rev Sport for. Um, we're all for copying. If something works, um, all jump on board. Um, and then at the end, um, we're happy to open up to questions um, if you've got any particular questions around um, Rev Sport. But if I can leave you with um, the most important point, and that's not we're not gonna cover everything on Revolutionise tonight because there's a lot to talk about. But what we wanna say is that Rachel and I are available. Um, now with this Zoom, we've already done a couple of training sessions with associations and clubs, one-on-ones, um, and we can look to do something similar. Um, my advice would be to look at a couple of things as a starting point with Rev, because there's a lot there. Pick that for 2021, let's do that, we'll help you. Let's get that right. And then next year we can roll out a couple more things and each year we get better and better. And hopefully, as we've seen with things like draws, we take it from an Excel spreadsheet that takes a week to within Rev Sport that takes an hour or two. Um, 
One of the other things we'll talk about too is that Hockey New South Wales has some rev sport experts that can help you with certain things as well. So Clint, on the back of our conversation the other day, we've spoken to Nathan that runs our state championships and he's actually going to be available to help do draws for associations and competitions. So he's available to do that. He does that. He knows it inside out. So we can help you with that. Jess, who's our media and comms, does all our website stuff, has said something similar, that if you need a hand with the website, reach out and Jess can help you with that. So that's the point I want to leave you with. We're not going to cover everything tonight. We're hopefully going to spark something that lets you identify where we want to focus, but then we'll look to tee up some time to help you through that. Um, and get it right in 2021. Um, just a couple of little housekeeping. Um, if you haven't noticed already, we're recording the session. We want to be able to use this um, for some of our volunteers that couldn't make it um, tonight. But that does mean that those that have their video on, um, we have headshots of you. So if you're not comfortable with that, I'm not going to be offended if you turn off your video. Um, also, if you want to keep it on, that's fine as well. Um, I'll just ask you to pop on mute um, unless you're talking or asking a question, just so we can make sure we don't get any um, feedback. Um, and I might hand over to Rachel to drive tonight. All yours. Thanks, Greg. Uh, so I am Rachel. I pretty much live in revolutionised. Uh, every day of the week, uh, including with my football club who have also Can't hear adopted it. So, Can't hear Rachel. Pardon? Can't hear you. Can't hear me? Can you hear me now? Just. Just. Um, is that better? Can everyone hear me now? Alrighty. So what I will do is share a PowerPoint that we have used uh, a number of different times when we're going around uh, the state. Can everyone see that? Yep. Alrighty. Um, so essentially, as Craig mentioned, um, what I will do is I will just go through the features of Revolutionize uh, and give you a bit of uh, overview of each of the modules that they have. Um, and then we can open it up to any questions that you might have um, and see what we can learn. Uh, so first off with memberships, obviously uh, it can take your club memberships, as all associations are already on it, um, but it has the ability to, it stores all members' histories. So um, you can always stay in contact with past members through um, emails, uh, SMSs, things like that. You can run multiple different reports uh, if you need data on particular ages, things like that. So um, having it all in one place makes, you know, a volunteer handover easy. You're not trying to track people's emails on uh, spreadsheets. It can all be done within the system. Uh, finances. So obviously you can use Revolutionise to collect any club fees, association fees. Um, you can also invoice like sponsors and things like that. So you actually have all your invoices and all your funds coming through Revolutionise. Um, once again, there's reports in all these sections, which I think is one of the best things about Revolutionise is there's there's always reporting. It always gives you uh, the information that you need. Um, there's also one of the 
things that some of the clubs and associations haven't always had is auto reconcile for invoices. There is a little tick box that uh, will automatically reconcile all your invoices if they've been paid or if they're zero dollars. Um, the other area that has been mentioned a lot of times with uh, mainly clubs is they don't want to charge their members the full fee right up front. Uh, we all know sport's not always the easiest, uh, cheapest sport uh, thing to be doing. So Revolutionize has the ability to set up a payment plan for your members. It is manual, but what it does is it sends reminders so you can set the payment plan. So it doesn't even have to be a set payment plan for all your members. If you have a member that wants to pay 50 bucks a week for eight weeks, you can set that in there. Uh, the invoices will go out automatically and you'll be able to track them. They can pay them online and it auto reconciles instead of trying to keep spreadsheets with different amounts and people handling cash and things like that. So that's um, one area that probably doesn't get used as much or is a, a little unknown, um, which can save a lot of time chasing invoices, chasing fees, uh, things like that. Uh, events is another one that uh, a lot of associations and clubs do use. Um, it's, we run a lot of things through events, even as you saw, we used um, our event section for our education week. So everyone can register. We have a direct um, way to email all the people that have registered. Uh, so I think Craig emailed out the link, the Zoom links through the event. Um, it also is great because you can charge your fees. So if you have a presentation or awards night or something at the end of the year, you can get people to register and pay up front. And there are settings that you can make it so uh, the event fees are, you have to pay when you register. Um, as I said, you have, you have the ability to communicate directly with that group of people uh, if it's, you know, come and try day and you get washed out instead of trying to enter everyone's email addresses or having them on spreadsheets, it's just a simple button within Revolutionize that you can say, you know, it's been cancelled, postponed. Um, in events also, you can use it as like an RSVP event or a paid event. And you can even set different prices for uh, like ticket types so if you if it is a paid event and adults are twenty dollars kids are ten dollars they're all things that you can do within the event section of uh rev um, just on that one um rachel i must also mention we're seeing more and more associations use events for their rep hockey um to have people um rsvp their interest in being part of the rep team um, and then that, as Rachel says, creates a list that you can then very easily manage in regards to communications um, and then even um, moving forward in regards to um, travelling and so forth. So it's an area we're seeing more and more associations and clubs use. I don't know if you can add a little bit more to that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so that's the other thing as well. If you did use it for rep trials or something like that and then you've selected your team it's also you also don't have to make all your members uh register for an event you can actually import them all so if you've selected a team of 15 you could import those 15 members into the event and that automatically invoices them i don't know if it was 150 dollars rep fee for example you can just import them and the invoice is automatically sent out to them so it's also another way, instead of having to go through and manually invoice, you know, the 15 different players, you can do things in more of a uh, bulk option as well. Um, so that is a little bit event about events. Uh, as I've um, 
mentioned already a number of times, uh, the communication ability of Rev is great. So uh, in events is one option. Uh, if you've got all your members, you can put them in teams. Um, so your team manager can just click a button and send an email. Um, the other thing one of the association mentioned was you can also use teams doesn't have to just be your sporting team. So you could create your team of your committee members, or you could make subcommittees and have them in the system as a team and communicate with them through that. Um, one of the things I will just mention is email is free. Uh, texting, you do actually have to pay for that and put credits on your account um, for the ability to message, like text message within the system. Um, but th we have seen a lot of different um, uses for the communications, whether it's your committees, your teams um, and things like that. Um, one of the great benefits you get is a free website. So if you sign up with uh, Revolutionize Sport, you don't, you not only get a portal, but you also get a website and it's free. Uh, it is a template website. So those that want their own super uh, unique individual website, you're not going to get that but we have seen plenty of clubs and associations um, you know deck out their website so you wouldn't know it and they have all their colors and pictures and they link all their social media you know Instagram Facebook all those things sit on their website as well um, and as Craig mentioned Jess is more than happy to help with those kind of things. So making sure that uh, everything's up to date and getting the best use out of your website and social media and things like that. Um, but it is great for those that don't have some of the smaller clubs um, that don't have a website and purely work off Facebook or Instagram um, you know, it's a really good place to be able to have all your club and association news in one place. Um, so that is a free website. Um, so online shop is another one that um, is a great area that I think lots and lots of clubs and associations can uh, benefit, especially time saving. Um, once again, you can make it so payment is mandatory up front. So you're not chasing people uh, for money after they've placed an order. Um, it also is really good in the sense that if you put your stock levels in, that will essentially do a stock take for you. So, you know, if you put 50 shorts in there, and they sell five of them, then you can run reports and go, all right, well, we have 45 left. You don't have to go in and manually keep counting all your stock and keeping spreadsheets and things like that. Um, it can all be done uh, within the system. Um, as you can see, there's you can add postage uh, and things like that as well. Um, but you can put all your different sizes, colours, um, everything like that. We have actually seen one association use the shop to charge their like rep fees. So they got everyone, so they just had rep fees, they just had the one price and they went in, the member went in and selected that rep fee. So there are other ways uh, you can use the shop as well. It doesn't just have to be your merchandise um, and clothing um, but it is another way that you can um, you know make better use of your time if you if you keep your yeah, stock and inventory in the system uh, so competitions this is probably more based for associations um, as they're the ones that tend to run the competitions um, but 
the system can do your draws for you. Uh, it, and I tell this to everyone I speak to, it's not the perfect system. It's not going to do every little unique, um, you know, team change, you know, someone has to play on a field five times and you have to play on another field three times and things like that. But it will do the bulk of your draw in, you can get it done in like 10, 15 minutes once you've got your teams and uh, your division set up and you know what days they're playing and stuff and it will do the bulk of your draw. So it will still save a lot of time. Um, and then you have the ability to export that draw that it's done for you, make any little changes, things like that. And then you can input it back into the system and it will show on your website. Um, and that's just the basic side of the draw. Uh, if you start using some of the other functions where you have all your teams and all your players and things like that, those parts of the system speak to each other. So you can keep track of, uh, you know, your highest goal scorer, red cards, yellow cards. It keeps all that information. If you've got all your players in teams, it will track all that information for you if you use uh the system to its fullest extent. Uh, it creates scorecards for you. It creates sign-on sheets. Um, if you have last minute changes to your draw, like if you have to move a game back half an hour or an hour, or you're swapping to a different field, you can actually do that within the system. And if you're, all your members are in teams, uh, there's a little tick box that gives you an option saying inform like your the players and officials of this change and they will get an email saying your game has been changed. Um, so the, there are lots of um, areas in competitions that I think it can save people time. Um, as you can see on the screen, it does say restrict participation eligibility. So you can put limits on, you know, your... Uh, in one of your teams, a member has to be part of a, a paid member to be part of that team. Uh, you know, it can only be a male team. It can only be a female team. They can only be 15 to be in that team. Um, and there is a, it's a very simple like finals eligibility or you can do is enter like, you know, they have to have participated in five rounds to be eligible. Uh, so once again, if you have uh, lots of unique um, eligibility rules or goalkeepers can play so many extra games in another team and things like that, it's not perfect for that, um, but it can still definitely save um, people time. Then everyone knows where to go for draws, results. You can make it so players can see you know, how many goals they've scored, how many cards they've got um, and things like that. Uh, training and classes and training, I haven't seen used a lot in the hockey space. Um, I find, or what I've experienced with talking to revolutionize, it tends to be more of like an individual classes kind of thing I have seen a few people use it for training so they can get their teams to register for their training and say if they're going to go or if they're not going to go um, I'd say if you're running like a coaching course or an umpire course this is where you could also use the system um, but yeah as I said there's definitely an area to be explored in there um, but I haven't seen it being used a lot in a hockey setting. Um, assets and venue bookings. Um, this is once again, probably more for venues rather than clubs, but you know, your clubs can book out times for sessions, um, 
if you have schools or other sporting organisations or groups that use your fields or your clubhouse, uh, that can all be kept within the system. You can invoice them for using um, the different areas uh, and you can charge them at different rates. Um, you can make it so if they book, it's automatically that their booking has been accepted. Uh, you can change that. So it has to be approved by someone at the club. Um, you can block out times. Um, once again, probably not an area that I've seen used um, a lot, but it is definitely in there to be utilized uh, for clubs, field bookings and the like. Did you want to say something, Craig? Yeah, I was just going to mention something with the asset and venue bookings that we are starting to see a bit more of is venue operators using it to, and point three on that, to track utilisation. So when you're looking at government grants around facilities, where you can actually provide detailed data on who's using it, when they're using it, it definitely helps the case we're finding with government grants. A lot more of the government grants, they're asking for evidence-based data to support um, the request. So I've seen a couple of um, venues start to um, track their training sessions, which previously they didn't have a great handle on who was using it when. So just another thought that um, if you're looking at um, government grants and refurbishments and so on, it may be something worth looking at. Rachel, I did have one question that came through on the online shop and you're probably best to answer it, but it was, can the online shop keep inventory of loaned rep uniforms? Um. Might be one we have a think about and come back. Yeah. Um, I guess I, I'd probably just get a little bit more clarification on um, how they'd want that to work exactly. Um, so I can touch base with that person um, and get a little bit more information about that and um, come back to them with an answer. Uh, so rostering, um, I've seen this used for umpires, uh, canteen rosters um, and all sorts of things. Once again, emails within the system. Um, we have had a few associations come back um, with a bit of feedback around this and saying they couldn't if they had different payment rates for different age groups the system wasn't perfect for that but they're all the kind of bits of feedback we also like to take back to revolutionize so they can work on um, but yeah you can put in uh, like your umpires can say when and when they aren't available which all comes through to you when you're doing your rostering um, and things like that once again probably another area that's um, hasn't been used as much with associations and clubs, um, but it's definitely in there um, to be used. Uh, and governance tools, there's a couple of different ones within revolution, like within your revolutionized portals. Uh, you can record injuries and incidences. Um, you can also, um, put your meetings so your committee meetings and things like that um, we have had a few associations take that up because then you know the paper-based ones aren't stored at someone's house or on someone's computer they're actually stored within revolutionize so once again if your volunteer turnover previous um, like previously it's been hard getting minutes and things like that where this is all kept 
in the system and you can lock them in it so people can't edit it um, like once it's all been approved. So in your next meeting, you might all agree that it's all approved and then you go back and lock those minutes and no one can then go in and change anything. Um, so there's, um, you can put in action items and tasks for people as well and they all link back to your profiles within the system. So once again, having, um, I think overall, the more you put into the system, I think the more you can get out of it too. So uh, if you have all your members and teams and things like that, you can link um, any injuries and incidents reports back to your members and that will stay on their profile as well. Um, so probably another underutilized area, but it's, um, it's definitely in there and I think it's a great place to be able to store uh, the information so it's available to to your admins and any future administrators and volunteers. Um, one of the other things I will mention about Revolutionize, which I don't think this um, slideshow has, is um, with your administrator access, you can control what people can see. So if you have people on subcommittees that don't need to see the finances or, you know, you don't want everyone to be able to see the, the draws or change, have access to change draws and things like that, you can control all of that within the administrator section. Um, and I believe that is the end of my overview of the different modules. Um, One thing I might just get you to talk to, Rachel, what we're finding um, across hockey is um, almost 30% turnover amongst volunteers each year, which means we can have associations and clubs um, being incredibly um, successful use, using um, Revolutionise and literally from one season to the next can come right back to starting from scratch again. So in that case, Rachel, and from all the people you've been working with, if you had to pick a couple of points to start at, because as I said, there's a lot in Revolutionise, what's a couple of good ones just to start things off? Uh, for people just to go exploring in Exploring, the and if you had to set yourself, I'm going to master two or three things in a season. I think uh, financing and invoicing um, is a big one because I think it can save a lot of time. Um, I will say as I mentioned at the beginning, um, my football club has previously uh, not really had any system to use. So they never had invoices for sponsors, suppliers, anything like that. They never had payment plans were kept on spreadsheets. Um, so I think putting all your like I'm not saying you have to use it for everything, like uh, you might still have an MYOB or something separately, but having all your invoices so there's a history so you can track these things, um, trying to get out of the habit of taking cash for uniforms through the canteen, um, you know, not having heaps of spreadsheets, tracking different payments, different payment plans, um, really kind of changing that side of where sport previously, I think Craig, you've mentioned it a few times um, when we've been going around is trying to get away from all the cash handling and really trying to put more of it online. So as I said, there's kind of a few different areas. You can invoice members, you can put it through the shop, uh, you can put it through events and all just to kind of streamline um, taking payments, I think, would be uh, one area. Um, and that's one thing that does get brought up is, you know, obviously there is a revolutionised fee with payments. Um, I think more and more people are just getting used to that because it's online. But that's not to say that, 
you know, if someone's on a payment plan, they can't deposit their 50 bucks a week into the bank, but then the invoices are still in the system. So you can still track them. All you have to do is quickly jump in, reconcile that you guys have received the $50 cash. Obviously it makes it quicker and more efficient if they pay online, but we know not everyone likes to do that. Um, but the invoices are in the system. So if they haven't paid three, they're gonna have three outstanding invoices. You can have um, the system set so they get issued an invoice 7, 14, 21, 30, 90, I think it goes up to 180 days um, that they get that re reminder. And as I said, it's still in the system. So you guys know um, if they're fallen behind, you can do bulk invoice reminders. Um, you can just reissue an invoice at any point as well as the automatic reminders. Um, and that can save a lot of time instead of emailing different people, different things. Um, so that I would say is probably one of the biggest areas. Um, and then for associations, probably drawers as well. I know they can take up a lot of time. Um, and I know, as I said, during it, the system might not be perfect to get it exactly the way you want straight out of the system, but it will still save a lot of time getting the bulk of the drawers done and then just making small tweaks to it. Um, I think Craig and I uh, almost died once when we uh, had it, someone from one of the associations contact us saying they've spent five hours trying to do a draw in Revolutionize um, instead of just picking up the phone and being like, you know, I'm getting this error, which I fixed in five minutes. Um, so that would be the other thing to take away from this is if you do get stuck, have like have a play. There's the help section um, with lots of short tutorials, which are great. Um, but if you ever get stuck on something or you think the system should be able to do something, drop us an email, give us a call. Cause the last thing we want for you guys to be doing is spending an hour, two hours, three hours on something you think should be quick or that you think the system should be able to do. I just want to also mention that um, one thing we're working with um, Revolutionize on is acknowledging that we will have this volunteer turnover, which is something we're going to have to deal with um, ongoing. So we're looking at building an onboarding system. So when we do have someone new coming on board to an association or club, how we can make that transition within Revolutionize so much smoother. So a big project, but a really exciting one that again, we're hoping will make things a whole lot easier and less daunting for a new volunteer that arrives um, sometimes because someone else hasn't put their hand up, but um, we can make that um, landing within Revolutionize um, a lot smoother. So that's something we've got on the go right now. And we're hopeful that um, in the future we can release to associations and clubs. I had a question here from Jan. Could you share the info with others? Shop rep uniform. You might need a little bit extra there, Jan. If anyone. Hi. Hi, Rachel and Craig. What I went, when we, someone asked the question about whether they could do their rep uniforms in shop when you lend out team sheets, shirts, is what, which are what I'm thinking they are. Yeah. So if you find out the answer, can you just share that with everyone? I just sort of thought you'd probably put in all the shirt numbers, say who's got it. It's a zero cost. And then when it comes back, I don't, I don't know, you then reconcile it back somehow. But so if you find out the answer, we would be keen to see what you do. Yep. Yeah. Um, more than so happy to I mean. share that. Um, when Craig and I discussed it and there was one other thing an when Craig just said about remember when Rev first came on board and we had like a training database that we could go in and fiddle around with 
way back yonder. I know you don't remember now, do you, Craig? But maybe that for new for new volunteers who have no rev experience, they could actually go on and play with it without damaging anything, which is what we all did in the beginning. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely recommend. I was a bit of feedback there. Um, having a play in the system, um, it's pretty hard to break it. Um, but sure. sometimes oh. the, the best option is to, to get in and, and have a play. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I've just got another question here, Rachel, which I think is one of our most common questions. And it's, is it possible to get the game sheets printed darker or have Red Sport make the template darker? It's one of the things we've raised with Rev Sport a number of times. Um, what we're hopeful, and one of the great things about having the other states and territories come on board, is we now have um, very much um, a combined power to identify our top priorities, and then through Hockey Australia come up with um, a development plan each year. So these are the sorts of things um, on the back of the first year of the other states, although it all looked um, quite different across all the states in with COVID, but some of these um, can now be brought forward through Hockey Australia and we're hoping um, that development cycle kicks into gear a little bit more than what we've probably had in the last couple of years. Craig, um, just, just a couple of things if I may. Is, and uh, Firstly, this has been very informative. I didn't realise that this thing was so, you know, universal and what it could do and, and that's that payment plan for example I'm, i know that um some of our clubs would be very um happy to hear about that i'm, I'm sure but the just going to the financials uh, we're a tier two uh, incorporated entity so we've got to provide audited reports etc and, and do our best each quarter um and that's done through i'm not sure whether it's through zero or the other one my of um, you, Rev wouldn't do that, would it? You wouldn't be able to do your VAS through... No, no. What they do, and it's what um, Hockey New South Wales does, is getting the systems to talk to each other. Right. I'm but sorry. Yeah, there's certain things that you need an accountancy package for, absolutely. Yeah, there you go. I, I, don't, I just had a quick scan. I don't think the treasurer is here, but that's okay. Um, and, and if we did deposit our data into Rev and in, in a, a year or two years time, you, we, our contract fails and we, Rev's gone, we bring in another provider, where's our data go? We own the data. Um, so like when Hockey Australia transitioned and Hockey New South Wales transitioned out of Sports TD, we actually took an export of that data before we left. Um, that being said, um, I'm incredibly confident that this is a long-term relationship. Um, so I'm incredibly comfortable that we're, we're on a system too that's the fastest growing system in Australasia. That's because it's good. So other sports are hopping off all these other systems and hopping on Rev Sport, which again is um, a good sign. Um, but it's a, it's a reasonable point you make. But hockey owns the data. And the, and the okay, that's great. And the PowerPoint that you, that uh, Rachel used, are we able to get access to that PowerPoint? Absolutely. Okay, that would be great. And and finally, that that tick box tick box arrangement for draw changes to be emailed to players. That's a incredible innovation. That would be so helpful in so many so many ways. Again, these are the sorts of things that might be worth, um, if it's of interest, having a conversation with Nathan, because correct me here, Rachel, but Nathan uses this for state championships. Yeah. So when we have to change draws and so forth, that's exactly what he's doing. So I think not just between Hockey New South Wales and associations, but between associations and associations, we can learn from each other how we're using it. Um, so to your point before on the payment plans, what we're seeing a number of clubs do is set a $1, a $20, a $50 fee at the point of registration when you pay Hockey New South Wales and Hockey Australia. So there's a small fee, but then there's that option to pay over time, um, which 
is, is important for a lot of members. Well, if that's the case, like, you know, I've never heard of it. It's never been suggested to me that players could do that. Um, and I might just be leaving that to share, so I don't know. But that's, um, I'm sure that we'll have people that are happy to hear that. You know, great concept. That's all. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Clint. So I have a couple of questions that have come through. Um, how do we issue an invoice to sponsors? Uh, it's a little different to uh, members, but in the account section uh, in the top right-hand corner, um, when you click on that, another page comes up and there's a dress book. Uh, you can actually add... Um, like sponsors and suppliers and things in there. And then you have the ability to manually invoice from that section um, rather than like where you'd normally find your members' invoices. Um, if that answers that question. Um, and Adam, just instead of replying in the chat, um, I'll get Jess to contact you about that one. Um, he's just added, uh, asked a question about the rotating banner on the homepage. Um, so Jess is definitely our website guru on that side. So I'll get, um, I've got your email address in the uh, event. So I'll pass on your question to her and get you, her to answer that. Um, as I said, she'll be the best to answer that question. Again, I'll just say from the start, we've very purposely <laughs> looked at tonight's session to give you an insight into what the system does because there's so much it does. So to have a training session and cover everything is almost impossible. So what we want to do is really encourage you to have a think about tonight. If there's anything that interests you, then reach out to Rachel and I. We're more than happy to help. Um, as I've mentioned, we've run sessions before where we've done an hour with each club um, across a, a day, a night. Um, so we can do things like that. Um, we can spend a bit of time with the association committee and break it up. We can spend time with the person doing the competition and draws. We can then spend time with um, someone looking after rep. So there's lots of different ways we, we can look to assist. Um, again, we don't need to um, solve all the problems tonight, but just wanted to give you a little taste of um, what the system can do. Um, we're absolutely convinced that there's hours to be saved. Um, and that's what we're um, most keen um, to help you with. Uh, I just had a question there, best way to contact us. I'll actually drop everyone on this um, session an email afterwards, um, just asking um, for you to give us a, some quick thoughts on how the session went. In that, I'll have um, some contact details that you can use to um, reach out to Rachel or I. Uh, we also just had another one come through about running a session on draws. Um, I think Craig will touch base with Nathan uh, and potentially that's just another one we might run one evening between Nath, myself and you? I think definitely. Um, it came about a little bit late for Education Week. It started with a conversation with Clint and Far North. Um, so he didn't really have time to build it into this week, but we're definitely looking at where we can run a session um, and have um, Nathan and, and Rachel specifically talk about draws and um, helping you out with that. So definitely on the agenda. And again, now that we've got a list of people that are interested in Rev Sport, we can use this list through Rev Sport, Rachel, to contact everyone if we have some stuff coming up. So um, we can keep in contact. And I think we'll um, kind of do a uh, debrief after, because we've got three Rev Sport sessions this week. Um, so. I think we'll kind of run a debrief. We might even put out like a FAQs and if there's particular interest in a, an area like draws, we might look to run separate sessions for particular areas as well. 
That's a really good point, Rachel. So your next session is... Thursday morning. Thursday morning. So that'll be a lot like this one. So if you're on this session, I wouldn't um, suggest you need to jump on the next one with Rachel. But Friday lunchtime, we've actually got Rev Sport um, to bring in a couple of their um, internal staff to talk about um, Rev Sport. So that might be a good one if you're really interested um, to jump on that one as well. It's only 45 minutes, again, just over lunchtime on Friday. If there's no more questions, again, a genuine thank you for giving up your evening um, to jump on this session. Um, really appreciate it. I've said it on a couple of sessions today. Um, our hockey volunteers are absolutely the lifeblood of our sport. Our sport relies on you. Um, and so we're very keen, and that's what Education Week is all about, to help you as much as we can. So I hope you found it valuable. Um, don't be scared to reach out. Um, we're only a phone call or an email away. Um, and best of luck for the season. And let's hope we can help you with, um, as I said, just one or two things that can get you started on Rev Sport. Thank you, everyone.